There are a lot of note taking apps available in the market. Most of them are free and open source and some they are they have to pay for them. But in all of them have their ups and downs. They have a lot of features and they promise you a lot of things. Like Obsidian it gives you it tells you that you have you can create a second brain for you forever, etc. Or you can have let's say Locksec which also gives you a tell you it is a privacy uh, focused uh, note taking app. You can go for Joplin, which is also free and open source. You can go with Rome, Notion. There's a simple one, which is Sherry Tree. And of course, when you when you look at uh, Obsidian, it gives you all the connected uh, files that are available and gives you a good glimpse of what you expect to have if you want to start taking notes. But I want to go different and I want to go to a very simple note taking app or it's like a wiki that's why it's called zim wiki which gives you a, an easy way and a powerful way also if you know how to use it so that you can keep everything let's say keep an archive of notes a daily journal organize everything and do brainstorming all of it in a very small app which is not an electron app which takes a lot of ram and space but a very simple application which can give you a lot of power so let us start with this app and see how it is used i have here lubuntu 22 and i will use it to install them and we'll check how it performs on this uh, lubuntu what we will do first is to install it if you want to install it first you have to go to system tools let's say and i add to desktop this qt terminal i make it trustable you double click it sudo apt install them you put your password and it is very small you can install it from here another method that you can do is if you don't want to use the black terminal is you go to system uh, system and move on package manager okay so this is the move on package manager if you want to install any application you can use either the move on package manager or the terminal okay and as you can see now it is zim it is installed so, so let me close uh, close these and close this one and close this one what we can do is you can go to accessories zim wiki you add to desktop and i trust this executable i double click it so it tells me where you want to put your folder you can put it in notebooks and you name it as notes you can i i will name it as 13 minutes the folder and okay so this is uh, zim the first thing that you can do is you can use the bold or italic or mark highlight or strike through So for the bold, you pick it and you press the bold or the strong. For the italic, you press this one. For the marking or the highlight, you can press this one. And for the strike through, you can press uh, this one. So this is a very straightforward way to use it. I prefer not to use the, the markdown syntax that everyone uses because uh, Zim is different. For example, let's say I want to put in a heading. I will press equal equal home, for example. It will be, this is a heading. For the markdowns, it, they use the pound. So that's why it's better to use the menu. So for example, if I have, this is heading one. If I want to go for heading two, all I have to do is, and go here, the edge, heading two. So this is heading two. Heading three, it will be smaller. Heading four, heading five, it depends what, what you need. If I want to put a, a checkbox, checkbox, all you have to do is you put star, same as any markdown and you space. You, play, you say first. If you press enter, it will be the second. And this is the third. There's another example with the bracket. If I put the bracket bracket and I put space, it will be a check mark. 
check one and I have check two and check three so I press enter if I want to put it as checked I can press here I press again it will be unchecked and if you can this is the empty one this is for the checking if I want a horizontal line I press this one it will be a horizontal line I can start with another topic another thing we have to talk about is the plugins if I go to edit preferences plugins these are all the plugins that you are you can use you can use arithmetic etc etc I the ones that I really need to talk about is if I want to insert an equation to insert an equation it tells me that LaTeX and DVIPNG failed it has some dependencies so we need to install these dependencies I will tell you how we can install these dependencies also and also if I want to put a block of code which with uh, color uh, color highlighting I can use also this one but it also says that it needs GTK source view so let us install these uh, dependencies and we'll come back to it so first here what we can do is we can go to system tools more package manager and we search for GTK source and if you notice there is here girl one GT source GTK source dash three so this one I mark for installation I press ok apply changes I will put the password we need to install also this this one I press ok so we have two libraries to install I'll get out and come back go to edit preferences go to plugins go to source view and GTK source view is okay so now I can use it if I want to use it here let's say I will put insert it will be here we have a code block the sign text let me put it as sh you can put python you can put html you can put whichever sign text that you want this is all the choices that you can think of haskell html all of them i'll put sh let's say and i'll put here sudo apt install zim and you see the color coding that is available the number you can change the number if you want how you can change it is very simple here you when you enter the code block there is the display line numbers you remove the display line number and you can install the same thing so the next thing that we will use is the latex and the latex if you remember it needs latex and dvipng for uh, arch you only need to install uh, text live dash core it will install everything for you for ubuntu you have to install two things you need to install the uh, text live dash latex that dash base and dvipng so what we will do here is let me go back also to this mu1 package manager we search for it has all these dependencies it has tex, uh, text live base all of this so in the details i mark it for installation i press ok and it is so it has finished let us see uh, in the preferences plugins and the equation so LaTeX is okay. We need also DVI PNG. So DVI PNG, I search here for DVI PNG. Mark for installation. Apply changes. Put my password. And it's finished. We go to the preferences, to the plugin, in the equation. LaTeX is okay. DVI PNG is okay. I press it. I press okay. So now I can write an equation. If I want to write an equation, I go to insert. Now we have an equation here. You need to know the sign text for LaTeX. For example, if I want to put a fraction, I press frac, let's say A and B. I press the preview. It gives me A over B. If I want to change the size, what I can do is in the plugins, you need to have the latest version to 
for it to work inside the equation you go to configure you increase the font and you can also increase the the uh, dpi i press ok so now let's say i want to insert another one insert another equation i make it a preview and it is big so you can make it bigger you have to make sure that it is the latest version because if you don't have the latest version you need to do it you don't have this configuration if you want to write math equations and you don't know the syntax for LaTeX, what you can do is you go to the browser. I already put it as a bookmark. It is called the LaTeX editor .com. What you can do, let's say if you want to put a square root of something. So let's say you put the square root of A squared plus B squared. And if you don't like the color, you want the color to be green, let's say. You want the color to be green. You copy this one. You come back here. You insert another equation. You paste it. You make the preview. So this will be in green. And you have the equation in green. So you have this, this option. The last thing that we will talk about is the table. So we can make a table. The table is very basic, but you can use it. Here, I don't have a table, so I need to go to the plugins. It doesn't need any dependency, the table. So all you have to do is go down, 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 and table editor, and press OK. So here, when you say insert, now you have a table. You put, let's say, if you want, let's say three columns. I have the first column, I will call it column one you can call it let's say column a if you want another one column b and another one column c what you can do is if you want to left align center or right align each column i will let's say i will make center this one and we'll leave the others i'll press ok so it give me this column a column b and column c Let's say here I want to write one and here I want to write, let's say this one and this one is this one. You have to be careful. This one doesn't use tab. So you have to click all the time. That's why it's very basic, but I give you another method in order to input data into a table. For this one now, you can press this, this and this one if you don't need this column you can remove it so i have only two rows if you notice here the column a is center aligned these are left aligned and left aligned if you want to get them again or make them all center all you have to do is center and center of course there is also a workaround for uh, this one if you want to enter uh, very big data let's say you go to also to the internet there is a another website you can use is tableconvert.com what you can do is you paste your csv if you have a csv file which is a table which is separated by the fields are separated by a comma you can paste them here you will get the result here or let's say you want to make a table editor let's say i want to have four columns and two rows so it give me four columns and two rows i'll put here let's say column one I press tab column two column three and column four and here I press let's say 12 etc etc and etc so what we have here is you you input it the data you get this markdown you go to markdown so this is the column that you want if you want to have a text align all of them as center you can press it so what you have to do is you copy this one and you paste it here so you'll get the same uh, result but faster so these are basically all the things that you need to, to do there's many things that you need to to be careful about especially if you have a dark theme Let's say you have a dark theme and this one is yellow. The color will not be good. 
So if you want, you can change this highlight of yellow through the configuration files. How to get it? We'll go to here. I have the zim config. It speaks about all the configuration that you need to do. The thing that you need to do is you go to dot config. I will show hidden. So you'll go to dot config zim and inside the style what you can do is the tag mark yellow you can put it as let's say light blue so you have changed the background of the highlighting and you can change many things you can experiment with many things for this one let me save this one so i will save it and if you notice here the highlight is yellow let me close it so now the highlight is light blue the other thing that we want to talk about is in the config configuration file if you have a, a dark theme what you can do is you go to dot config gtk let me increase it a little bit so this one you go to dot config gtk3 gtk.css if gtk.css does not exist you create it if it exists you have to add these at the end so if it exists you add these at the end if it doesn't exist you make a file gtk.css and you put this these two lines what this means for these two lines is that the background dash color you can change it you can make it another let's say you want it black you can put it as black and the color here for the foreground text color if you notice in zim here it is white background and black text you can change it through this one into the background color you can change it into let's say blue and the foreground color you can change it into yellow you put here blue and you put here yellow so to elaborate what you have to do is you have to go into config gtk3 gtk css i will go to here lubuntu go to config there is gtk 3.0 there is no file we have to create this file so i'll create the file which is gtk.css and in this file all this copy and i open it i paste this and if you notice here the colors I want to change let's say I will put the color for the background let me make it as red and for the foreground I'll make it as white I will save it so this file is saved I will go out here I will go out and come back and I will enter it again and now if you notice the background here is red and the color if you want to right it will be as the font is white so if you want to change it again what you have to do is you go to gtk config gtk you can remove the file because i only created it for this matter i'll go out come back again and it is finished the next thing that we will talk about is about the images and the attachments so what you can do is if you notice first uh, let me check something if i am in lubuntu and in i'm notebooks and in 13 minutes if you notice i have this file which is home home.txt if i want to include another file i can do another text file there's no problem and if you have any attachments inside it will be inside the folder if you notice here the home folder it has a over b as an equation dot png there is the text file dot text etc etc you can have also some drawings and some text and some attachments as you can see in the example that we will do so what we can do now uh, let's say if i want to create a page i will create a page i will call it let's say attachments and here in the attachments let's say i want to add a picture so what i can do is if i go here and let me go to my uh, youtube channel Let's say I want to take this logo, I copy the image, I go to attachments here and I go to edit, paste. So I have this image. So now this image is saved. 
So I have the attachments.txt, the file, and we have the attachments folder. And in the folder, now I have this image. If you want to attach another files, which so that you you have the complete note for everything. Let's say you have uh, a certain project, you need some uh, CVs, you need some uh, supported uh, documents, all of these. So you can put them as an attachments. What you can do is in here, I will also go here and press an attachment. You can attach any file that you want, any type. Here I have these uh, these folders. I have a obsidian.app image and that file. I can select these and I will open. So what I have is I have these two files. These two files are will be included also in my attachments folder, as you can see. So now in, in these 13 minutes, I have these included. So if I want to back up all my notes, all the data that I have will be included here. The last two things we will talk about, I promise you these are the last two things, is about links and how to export. So if I want to create a link between uh, two files, let's say the attachments and the home folder, what I can do is, let's say now I'm in the attachments folder, I want to go back to home folder without pressing these two. So what I can do is I press, let's say I put a text, go to home. Okay, I select it. I press Control L and it tells me you want to link to which one because I'm in attachments I want to link to home so what I press I press H and if you notice it gives me the two alternatives or the two files so I want to link it to home and I press link so whenever I press this one it will go to home let me press it it will go to the home file if I want to go from home file to the attachments I will let me I will write here go to attachments and I take it all, I press Control L, and here I will say, I want to go to attachments. So I press A, attachments, so directly it gives me the file that is available here. So I press link. So now when I press it, it will go to attachments, and I go here, I will go to home. Sometimes uh, some, some uh, links will be created automatically. Why? Because if you go to edit here and preferences, there is one thing that you have and it says automatically turn camel case words into links which means if I write any camel case word it will give me a link directly you can turn it off or you can keep it if I keep it like this what will happen is let's say I want I write let's say uh, every week so this is a camel case word. So directly it created it as a link. I press it. So I, nev I now have a file which is called every week. If you are not comfortable with this one, so you don't use the camel case. So what you have to do is you go to preferences and here you turn it off. This is very important. The last thing we will talk about is how to export. Sometimes you want to export a certain file or many files or all the notebook to, let's say, Obsidian, which is an Obsidian app because it's based on Electron. But it is very, too much popular these days, especially on YouTube. You will find a lot of videos talking about Obsidian. I prefer them better. But if you want, let's say, to take this file and you put it in Obsidian, so what you have to do is you go to File, Export, and in the export, there is two options. Either you have the complete notebook, which is the 13 minutes folder, which is up there, or you have a single page. So if I go for single page, I will get forward. There's the choices here. You have HTML, MHTML, LaTeX, or Markdown, or Sphinx. So because it is Obsidian, we will use Markdown. We'll go for forward. So it tells me where is the output file. The output file, it is here in 13 minutes attachments.md. If you notice, this file is .md. Zim files always are .txt. Export each page to a separate files. No problem. I'll, I'll press OK. This file already exists, of course, because I did it before. And I'll press yes. So export completed. So it is OK. If I want, let me open Obsidian. For Obsidian, I created my vault. They, they call it a vault, the same as the 13 minutes. 
that's why it will show me all of this when you enter obsidian for the first time it tells me which is the vault so i pressed also 30 minutes now i have this attachments it is only this one is, is apparent not the other home folder because home is dot txt if you notice here you have home.txt attachments.txt and attachments.md so obsidian only gets attachments.md doesn't talk about the text files it doesn't include them in the folder so if i press it so this is a source mode i'll put it as reading it will give me the file because obsidian has this feature zim it automatically renders the image so you have the reading and the source mode so this is the same thing as you have here. In the end, Zim is a wonderful tool. You can utilize it in everyday uh, work and it will boost, definitely boost your productivity, especially if you have doing uh, daily tasks or if you want to distro hop. So every distribution, you'll have a note on it so that you can go back to it whenever you need and learn more about your skills and how to build your brain to improve and flourish. Thank you.